everybody. Welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. So I am excited to be here again on Friday for Pink Sheep and Friends. Um, I see we have people joining. Hello. Thank you all for being here. Um, I am not sure. My guest today said that she might be a little late. So I am going to see uh, when she's here. I told her to just comment in the chat uh, once she's here and I can invite her to join the live. So that's exciting. But I am, uh, let me get my notes. I will be going live with Nikki of Knickknacks and Knots today. And I am super excited because we have been following each other for quite some time. So it's always exciting to actually get to meet uh, someone that I've been following for a while. Um, so that is exciting. Um, and I wanted to share a few things with you guys today. So if you are here, um, let's see. First off, I am still looking for testers for this lovely Powerpuff jacket or vest. This is the, the vest version of the jacket. So you guys can see this is a uh, nice chance to actually show it off a little bit. Um, but still looking for testers for the smallest size, the extra, extra small, um, as well as 2X, 3X and up. So I've got 2X, 3X, 3X, 4X and 4X, 5X that still need testers for this jacket. You do have the option to um, make the collar into a hood. So um, I'm actually making another one. I wanted to show you guys because I have not shared this here on Instagram yet. I had some leftover whoop, Lion Brand Vel Lux Jumbo. Let's show you guys. So this is actually on clearance right now by Lion Brand. So if you guys wanted to check it out, I think it's like $4.99 a skein now. Um, but this is what it looks like. So this is going to be my second one. I can figure out which direction this is supposed to be. So I can hold the thing up. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to turn this one into a hooded version. But you can see, I've got nice light in here right now, so you can see how bright this is one side, other side, and then I just changed colors at the armpit and then in the center of the back. So it's actually going to be five different colors versus this one. I just did two colors on the back, um, two, and then I did the one. So I did three colors for this vest. This one's going to have five. Um, this yarn worked up a little bit smaller. Um, I use the same size hook, so this one uses a 25 millimeter hook, um, but this yarn is a little bit smaller, so it worked up a little bit smaller, so I made the size up. I made a small medium with this one. This one is an extra small small, but they worked up about the same since this one ended up being just a little bit smaller. Um, but I'm really excited about this one and having the bright green hood, so I'm actually working on that right now. So you can see me working across. I'm just going to continue making this tall enough until I can sew it up at the top. And then I'm going to do the bottom border. And I think for this one, I'm going to do a front border. So I want to have front one front border that goes all the way up around the hood. And it will probably be orange. So I'll probably have an orange border that goes all the way around. So it's going to be a really fun one. I'm excited about this pattern in particular. Um, and it's made me... Um, it's made me think about expanding the Power Puff collection. So I made last year, I released the Power Puff jacket that calls for a super, uh, I keep saying super, but it's jumbo. So jumbo yarn, size seven yarn. Um, so I released the Power Puff jacket and it was just so much fun and it was such an interesting design and I wanted to push myself to use more jumbo yarn for wearables to just make really statement type pieces. Um, so a little more on like the higher concept fashion avant-garde kind of stuff, you know, um, a little extra. Um, and so came up with the vest and now I'm already thinking about doing a really fluffy, um, power puff hoodie. So what I've thought about for that one is doing like ribbing 
out of smaller weight yarn that's held double. So doing like a super bulky yarn held double um, with a smaller hook to make ribbing, but then join into the ribbing with some really jumbo size weight yarn and have it be like a, um, not a half zip because I don't want to do a zipper, um, but it'll have the hoodie will come down a little further and it'll have the sleeves with some really chunky ribbing around the sleeve. So all of these ideas for using this jumbo yarn to make the power puff jacket into a whole collection of power puff items. So I thought that would be really fun. Um, just a reminder, uh, Nikki, if you join, if you are here, please be sure to let me know in the comments and I can bring you on. If you guys have joined in for Pink Sheep and Friends, um, my friend is running a little late today, so um, she will be joining shortly. Um, so just hang in there. I'm just want to sharing some new things with you guys um, like this Powerpuff vest. So I did want to share too, this is really fun. I'm going to be sharing uh, a reel about this today. Um, as you guys know, we 3D print crochet hooks. Um, and another cloudy day, I like the concept of a collection. Thank you. And I'm pretty sure you're testing the Powerpuff vest. So um, you'll let me know what you think and if it's something that you think I should expound on. Um, but as you guys know, we 3D print hooks. Um, and what that ends up meaning is that we buy a lot of printer filament um, and we try not to have any waste. It's, it's difficult, you know, especially once you get really, really low on your reel of filament. Um, but that also means that we have these things. So this is what printer filament comes on. So you can see this is by Cookie CAD. And, you know, most of the time there's not too much we can do with these. We've been brainstorming for a while as to what we could use them for. Um, but I realized when I went to go frog, so this project was actually going to be a power puff jacket, but like I said, this worked up smaller, even than this, this yarn is smaller than the yarn that I used for the power puff jacket. And so, um, this as a power puff jacket wasn't working. So it was like halfway done. I had to frog the whole thing. And I realized that there's no good way to cake yarn that big because even with a yarn winder, I have the biggest yarn winder that they make and you really can't easily cake jumbo yarn. So I realized that these make really good jumbo bobbins for yarn. So if you use jumbo yarn and you're having to frog a project or you just want a different way to store these, um, because you can stack them, you could, um, hang them on a wall, which is really cool. I know a lot of people do, um, the pegboards on their wall to slip the yarn cakes on them. So these could hang on a wall. You could spray paint them. I feel like there's a lot of things that you could do to actually turn these into something, um, fun to actually display yarn. So, um, playing around with that a little bit, you can see got this one here. And this is the one that I'm currently using to work on my project. And another thing I thought of, I don't own one of these right now, but um, if you guys have ever bought those yarn butlers where it's just pretty much like um, one piece of wood with like, two pieces of wood sticking out either side. So it's like a T. So you got this and this, and then you can slip the skein of yarn over this part of the T and then you can pull it and it'll spin for you. And I was like, these could go on there and then it could spin. So, um, so yeah, I feel like, uh, that was really cool. Um, I started doing that yesterday and had to film a little reel to talk about it because we have a lot of these, um, and we hate the idea of having to throw them out. So, um, somebody said they were interested in maybe us selling them. So if you are interested in having some of these to make a project, that would be fun because we could sell them for super cheap. We just need you guys pretty much to cover shipping and you know, that would be really neat. So let us know. We've got a whole bunch. <laughs> um, and Stevie, hello, Stevie it says, man, that would be so nice. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, it's, it's working right now for me. I, um, have emptied four of them since I started working on this piece. Um, and I think that while we wait 
for Nikki, I am going to work on this a little bit so you guys can actually see. If you guys have never seen me work with um, super, uh, like I keep saying super bulky yarn. If you haven't seen me work with jumbo yarn um, and a 25 millimeter hook, that is what I am doing for this project. And, oh, and if you guys are following my blog, if you, or if you're not following my blog, um, go check out my blog because if you um, are interested in using super bulky yarn or jumbo yarn, I have an entire comprehensive, pretty much comprehensive list of super bulky and jumbo yarn that's on the market right now that is good for fall and winter projects. So it's my newest blog post. If you go to therealpinksheathdesign.com, um, go to the blog. That's the first post and it's tons of yarn options. Um, wool options are separated from non-wool options for super bulky. And then in the jumbo category, it's interesting. I've learned that jumbo yarn, there are two types of jumbo yarn. There is jumbo yarn that calls for, I can focus because, oh, there's the end of my yarn. Um, there's jumbo yarn that recommends anywhere from an 11 millimeter hook to a 15 millimeter hook, which I call the smaller, I don't call it anything, but it's smaller jumbo because they're all labeled a size seven. But there is size seven yarn that is labeled and recommended on the back to use an 11.5 or an 11 millimeter hook up to a 15. And then there's the huge yarn, which, so this would be in that category. I'm pretty sure this one probably calls for a 15 millimeter hook. And actually I can check, it might be a 19. Let's see, and I'll show you guys what I mean. Um, here's one. This one actually still has a label on it. And then here's this one. Okay, so let's look at these real quick. This is what I'm using right now. The Lux Jumbo. Um, and thanks, Rebecca. Rebecca said, this is really cool. I hope this is interesting. <laughs> um, I haven't gone live on Instagram without someone joining me for a minute. So um, trying to share some things that I have learned. Um, okay, so this is a size 7 that calls for a 19 millimeter hook. So this is on the larger side um, of the spectrum for jumbos. But I, it's one of those where I'm not 100% in agreement. I would have put this in the smaller weight category of using a 15, um, not a 19, but that's what it says. Uh, but if you look at, for instance, this one here, this one recommends a 25 millimeter hook. So if you see on the back, this is a seven, but it recommends a 25 millimeter hook. So there's a huge difference, in my opinion, um, in the jumbo category. It's almost like you need an, an eighth category because I feel like these are going to call for, like I said, an 11 to a 15, but then these, it's more of a 19 to a 25. So it's a pretty big jump. I mean, if you jump from a 15 millimeter hook to a 25 millimeter hook, that's a big jump. Um, yet they're categorized exactly the same. They're both considered a size seven. Uh, same thing for... Like this one, this is a crazy one. So this one I treat more like a size six. So some of you guys may have some of this. Uh, if you have Michael's stores near you, they had this on clearance in a lot of stores. Um, this, they call it a seven here, but they recommend a nine millimeter hook, which is crazy. Because most size six yarn, so if you have like Wool East Thick and Quick by Lion Brand, let's grab one of those right here. Yeah. Right, y'all. Yeah. So this is an older label, but Wool East Thick and Quick, this is a size six weight yarn. You can see right here, yeah, six weight, but it calls for a nine millimeter hook as well. So somebody's lying. <laughs> So the fact that they have categorized this yarn the same as this yarn is a little crazy, a little crazy. And that is why I really think that paying attention to the recommended hook size is important, even if you're not going to use that hook size for the project. So for instance, 
Um, this is the size yarn that I recommend for my Luna cardigan, which is the one that I tell everyone, if you've never made a cardigan, this is, uh, that's the cardigan to use. You need super bulky size six yarn, which is like this. Um, but there are people who are like, I want to use this, but it says it's a size seven. Well, they recommend the same size hook. So you're going to be fine <laughs> either way. Now you, if you make my Luna cardigan, you'll see that not only do I recommend this size yarn, technically this too, um, I want you to use a 15 millimeter hook for my project. And there are some people who, especially if they're new, will get confused of like, well, you're saying I need to use a 15 millimeter hook, but this yarn says that I should use an eight millimeter hook. That's just a recommendation for the company to get a certain look to the um, tightness of the stitches. Okay, so they're going to help you by using an eight millimeter hook with this, you're going to get tighter tension uh, versus using a 15. It's going to be looser tension um, and you're going to have more flow to your cardigan. So that's why I do that with the Luna cardigan. But paying attention to that, because this says it's a size seven, it doesn't mean you can't use it for my patterns that call for a size six because they have the same recommended hook size. So riddle me that, Batman. <laughs> so. Okay, well, Nikki is here, so she is going to join, and I will stop talking about chunky yarn, even though that's, that's like, all I talk about. Um, but I hope y'all learned a little something there. That's a little fun. But this is what I'm going to be using for if I make a power puff hoodie. That's the goal, to use this and to mix it with this and put these two together. And that's going to be really fun. So, okay, let me put all this away, and we are going to bring Nikki on. Ba, ba, ba. And Will Print for Credits was on it and said, what a nice hook. And I will show you guys that. And I did see, I did see. So this is the hook that I'm using. This was uh, one that I made during the um, DIY hook challenge. The first year we did the DIY hook challenge. And I did Mod Podge with all of the little comic book, comic book pieces. So that's my 25 millimeter hook that I did. So that's really fun. So I wasn't ignoring you. I wasn't ignoring you. Move in that room over there. Okay. So let's invite Nikki to join us. Invite. Okay. So invited. Hopefully that will work. There she is. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I'm in my car because I had a I had to do an errand and the kids are sleeping. So I'm just going to stay in the car. <laughs> okay. That works. <laughs> so how are you today? Doing good. It's getting colder here. So I'm having to adjust to that. Yeah. And where you, so you're in Texas, right? Yeah. Still in Texas. Yeah. North and, Texas. And it still gets cold, right? Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's really hot and then really cold. The last few winters, it's been snowing and icing, and we don't know how to handle it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's that's how I feel being here in Alabama is, you know, when it does snow, they're, depending on where you are, because, again, I know, like, there are people who live in North Alabama where they'll get more snow because they have more of, like, the hills and the smaller kind of mountain areas. Um, but I know here, it's like, if it snows here, people are like, we just need to stay home. Like, there is no reason to get out in this. <laughs> well, and then there's the people that try to go out in it that really shouldn't. And they're like, oh, no, I can handle it. And then you see on the news all these cars slide together because it's... Yes! <laughs> mm hmm Or people getting stuck in their cars and literally just staying in their cars and then, like, dying in their cars. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. That happened in Atlanta uh, a couple years ago when there was a really, really bad snowstorm and... um luckily where I was, they sent us home early enough, you know, to where it wasn't an issue, but there were a lot of people who waited and waited and waited or work wouldn't let them leave. And there were so many people got stuck in, like you said, sliding backwards down a hill. <laughs> hey. uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Oy. Well, I'm so glad that you are here. Um, and I would love to start out for anyone who is not following you. Um, who does not know who you are or what you do, just a quick little intro about who you are. I don't have any of my products on hand, but I'm Nikki. I work, uh, my my little business is Knickknacks and Knots. It's just a 
one woman show here. I do everything, but I, I specialize in creating custom crochet hook handles out of polymer clay. Uh, I usually just go for comfort um, over intricate designs, but mm -hmm. I'm going to a little more, a little more like intricate designs, just you know, to be more fun. But um, I really love making custom sets mm -hmm. that I don't see a lot of other people doing. Is doing like a whole yeah. set, of um, and I can specialize and customize them for special grips. Some people like a taller handle some people like mm -hmm. a short handle. and that's the great thing about polymer clay is it can mold to whatever shape you want it to as as long as it is a sustainable shape and i've been yeah. kind of working kind of tweaking different different um playing around with different shapes to see what is comfortable to use and you know what looks fun and I've been doing that. I started in 2019, September 2019, mm -hmm. whenever I opened my Etsy shop and started mm -hmm. making crochet hooks and they sold and I was amazed. Yeah. So I started making them because myself, I started getting really big cramps in my hands, especially mm -hmm. using custom hooks. And I saw other people doing it. I saw it on Pinterest. I was like, I'm going to try it. And it was a lot of yeah. they sold. So I kept making more than I started getting orders. So I was like, okay, let's keep this going. Then the pandemic happened and I think that mm -hmm. opened up the the hobbies. Too. Yes. Like we had so um, that really helped my business grow because a lot of other people I think during that time started crocheting. Yes. Um, you know, I think ergonomic crochet hooks really do help with longevity of working. And uh, I've been doing it and it's been tapering off as far as mm -hmm. my, the amount of, of hooks I make because I did just have my fourth child about a year yeah. ago. Yeah. I'm still trying to get used to having four kids and, and running a small business. It's a definitely yeah. a job. So I haven't been making as much production, but I still do enjoy it. And I, you know, mm -hmm. I do uh, crochet uh, quite a bit. So I switch back and forth between the hobbies of polymer clay and yarn hobbies and I've been um, mm -hmm. designing not as much as you like that's what I want to you know tap into your brain about like designing because yeah I'm right around it but I do love crocheting I do love um, knitting as well and uh, that's that's pretty much my my brand yeah that's awesome well so I would love to know if you had worked with clay prior to making handles. Was that something you'd messed with at all or was that totally new? Like, so I have kids, so we do craft all the time and my sister mm -hmm. and I have craft nights. Craft nights was polymer clay. So I made like the little figurines and stuff. And like this yeah. it, it becomes hard and it's like, you know, pretty indestructible depending on the, the quality of the clay. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've worked with it little bit but whenever I started making handles that was really when I dove into it and started investing a lot into the different tools and really mm -hmm. understanding the difference between different types of clay yeah and I do have because I didn't know if you would have them but I do have this one that you made for me yeah. that was like in so the you guys of our friendship yes and I wanted to show everybody so you can see, you know, at least kind of an example if you guys are not following her yet um, to check out her Instagram page. But I would love to know, um, what did you mix into this one? Because it looks like you've got some shine in there as well, not just the color. And that's pretty much what it looks like in multiple pieces. But it's, um, I think it is, I forget what it's called. It's just little pieces of plastic cut clay and I, uh, add glitter they're translucent clays so whenever you add glitter oh, cool. types of colors to it whenever you bake it it's translucent and you can kind of see the layers of the glitter and that one that's really fun i have one that i make a lot of is a rainbow hook with translucent mm -hmm. add the glitter i wish i had examples i don't oh it's okay <laughs> well and so what are do you um 
with the color. So do you have to buy the certain colors or do you add additive to dye the I, clay? Uh, there are dyes. It's like an acid dye that you can mix into the clays. But I just, I, I buy the colors as they are. And a lot of times if I'm matching a picture, I've, I've done mm -hmm. color match for a picture. It's like a sunset picture. So I yeah. color and uh, I just mix different colors together until I get, until I get the color I like. Which how hard is that to, how hard is that to mix the two colors? Because I feel like that'd be a lot of like kneading. It is. It is. And yeah. I have a pasta machine, my clay machine, where you just roll it in and that makes it a lot easier. But before I had that, it was a lot of kneading and it does take a toll on your hands. It's a, it's a yeah. Big... Which is crazy because you're making ergonomic hooks to help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Insane>. so, yeah. <laughs> Ruining my hands while helping everyone. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, but the end result will help them. So <laughs> that's why I break every once in a while. Whenever a lot of mixing, it does it does uh, wear wear the hands out. Yeah. Well, so let's go back to the beginning. And when did you learn how to crochet? What What did that look like for you um, growing up? So I I started knitting when I was young. My grandma is a knitter. Mm -hmm. uh, taught me how to knit. Um, I learned it, picked it up pretty easily, didn't stick with it. Years go by. I have a job. It's like Boresville during the day. And my boss mm -hmm. said, you know, you can bring a hobby with you, bring a book or something. So That's awesome. Like, the idea just kind of went into my head is like, I'll learn how to crochet while I'm at work. So I mm -hmm. started on YouTube. I brought you know, the yarn, the hooks, and I started crocheting and I could not figure it out. Yeah. Because I was doing slip stitches every stitch instead of uh -huh. crochet. I didn't understand. <laughs> pull up a loop, yarn over and then pull through both of them. Mm -hmm. I was doing, Why is this so hard? Because I was trying to slip stitch every yeah. one. And I up. so I went back to knitting and then I tried again and I, and I finally got it. So... I think I started with blankets. I think blankets are probably my go-to just because they're so easy. And I crochet for the therapy of it. Mm -hmm. The process is, is fun. Yeah. So I don't really, I'm, I'm really bad at finishing projects because <laughs> it takes me a long time because I'll, I'll have multiple different projects that I'll be working on. So it's like work on mm -hmm. one and switch to another one just to kind of change it up a bit because you know, I get bored with them. <laughs> yes. And I think if you're making blankets too, it's difficult. Um, you know, unless it's an intricate blanket where you're doing a different stitch pattern ever so often or lots of different color work or, um, but I do think it's important if you're switching up projects, I've always thought it's nice if you can use different hook sizes. Oh, yeah. That's something that I've heard that and, um, you know, going from something that maybe uses for me and my range going from like a 10 millimeter to like a 15 to like a 25, I've got different projects going on with all different hook sizes. It's definitely helpful. Um, but I've heard the same with like going from crocheting to knitting. So do you still knit at all? I, I do like to knit. And I, uh, the most recent knit that I made was a lemon hat, which was really fun because it was just kind mm. of, I don't write patterns, but I can create things out of my mind. Um, mm -hmm the process of putting that thought into uh, directions is hard for me, but I can, I yeah. can do a lot of stuff. And it was a lemon. It looked like a lemon. It had a little leaf. It was fun. That was a fun knit. I want to make more, but you know, it's like finding the time in between everything else that I have. I get a lot of uh, baby blankets. So that's what I've been working on. Mm -hmm. baby okay. Blankets. And do you currently sell finished products? Like, do you make things for custom orders or is it more of like gifts and things for yourself and your family? I, I make a lot of custom orders. I don't really like, I've tried listing my ready-made items and they just, mm -hmm. don't sell. I don't know how to get them out to the general public to be eye catching enough. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's tricky. And I feel like they're getting more complex on how to list and how to notice. And I yeah. don't, for ads because it just away from my income and I don't yeah. you know I have to mark them down so customs I get most of my income from customs because mm -hmm. like right now in my shop I have um books that have they've been mm -hmm. 
there and I, they just don't sell it. And, you know, trying to figure out what sells, but that's why I can yeah. here. And that's the same with um, crocheted and knitted items. I don't know what to make that would sell. So yeah. having a custom order is just easier to know that, you know, you'll definitely be able to get that out the door. Definitely. And I know you're not alone when it comes to, um, and I know you wanted to talk a little bit about Etsy. And um, I think for me, you know, my finished products really don't move on Etsy either. The reason that they're on there is just so that they're somewhere. <laughs> just in case someone wants to buy it, it's available because, you know, I know for me, I did really well at craft shows. I, I did enjoy them when I had the time to do them. Um, you know, in, in the area that I was in, in Atlanta, people, you know, wanted to spend the money that should be spent on handmade items. You know, they weren't going to dog you about your price. You know, I felt like people understood what went into it and appreciated it. Um, and I had prepared for a season of craft shows pre-pandemic. And the year before the pandemic, I had a big surgery. So I have like two Tupperware bins full of product that was supposed to go to shows that I now have three years later that is sitting in my house. And so I was like, you know, I threw caution to the wind and, you know, just uh, shared probably half of it on Etsy, you know, just went ahead and made listings. And I was like, well, just in case, just in case Christmas comes up, someone finds it great. It's available. Um, but I have to say, it's definitely a code that's difficult to crack you know, and I think trying to stand out, I think that if I had more items that were super unique, so like right now, the stuff that I have on Etsy is like a pom-pom hat, a chunky pom-pom hat. There are so many just chunky pom-pom hats in pretty colors and mine isn't even pretty colors. It's just like one color and it's a pretty color, but it's like, here's a green one and here's a white one and here's a black one, you know? Um, and I think if maybe they were like super rainbow or like even chunkier, like something that like steps them up a notch, I think would make a big difference being in my shop. Um, but like I said, I just did it because I didn't want them to be sitting in my house and nobody know about them. I'm like, at least they're somewhere. <laughs> and maybe I'll do a show. I think having a brand, having people loyal to your brand gets you more recognition than just having a random list of shows. Like I think people... Mm -hmm. I've noticed people purchase for the supporting of a brand more so than mm -hmm. liking the product, you know? Oh yeah. Do I would go with a brand that I, I like someone I would want to mm -hmm. support rather than just a random person. Definitely. And I think our problem is the people that, cause they talk about no life and trust when it comes to brands. So like if you're building a small business, you want people to, to know who you are, to like you as a person and as a brand and to trust you. And I think the problem with the people like us who make things like crochet hooks and like we've realized, okay, there's a lot more people looking for, um, there's a lot more makers looking to purchase things. Uh, the people that know, like, and trust us aren't buying finished crochet right. projects because right. they're making them. <laughs> That's why I'm um, crochet hooks because it's like I noticed I was trying to make um, like headbands and things mm -hmm. that I I I'm not good with garments because it just takes mm -hmm. me to hats yeah gloves socks uh, very simple little items it's like everybody can make that everybody is making that it's like mm -hmm. you know to find the niche market you have to I, I figured out that if I can find my niche market within the maker community, mm -hmm. I can find a product that I could actually sell and help up, help people. So it's not really yeah. just um, making for no reason, but to make, to benefit others. Mm -hmm. Exactly. More rewarding than just selling something because, you know, if I mark it down, at least someone's buying it. And if I hear, wow, this helps me crochet longer, mm -hmm. my hair is like, that's, that's exactly what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reviews, I think, have been a game changer, um, especially for my husband in particular, because, you know, pre-making hooks, it was, you know, his only connection to the crochet community was me, you know, because I crocheted. There wasn't, you know, 
and this idea of him making hooks and being kind of removed from that community, uh, it was kind of hard to know, well, is there going to be fulfillment there, you know, for him? Because he is the one who's running the 3D printers and making sure that, you know, we buy the right parts and items and keep things running. And um, I think that when he sees the feedback, like reviews on Etsy and things like that, it's, it's more fulfilling than I even thought it would be for him, you know, to see like, oh my gosh, we're helping people, you know, <laughs> and it is, it's, it's such a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you are definitely the first 3d printed crochet hook uh, brand out there right now, which is awesome that you have. Oh, you did. I think, can I still hear you? There you are. Your audio had cut out for a second. Um, yes. Yes. And yeah, and I, I have seen a few people who have tried their hands. Like if you, if you Google at, or if you, if you Google on Etsy, if you, if you Etsy search, um, there are, I think two or three people maybe that are 3d printing crochet hooks, but most of them are like raw 3d printed hooks, right. which we figured out very quickly are just not usable you know i mean like you can try but you're gonna struggle and any any of the ergonomic yeah 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 any of that ergonomic shape that you add to them is going to be taken away by the difficulty of getting the hook through the stitches because it's not super smooth um and so we were saying how people can totally try it but you have to be all in it's like anything if you're doing polymer clay if you're doing resin poured hooks you have to be willing to purchase all the things you need to yeah. really be all in. Cause like we've talked about trying to pour, uh, like take our hook and turn it into a mold and right. then pour resin. But that's going to take a lot of like, you got to be all in. Like we're going to have to buy the right resin. We're going to have to buy the mold. We're going to have to learn the process, like yeah. all of these things. Um, and so with the hooks, if someone wanted to 3D print them, they could, but then they have to say, okay, well, we're going to have to put in the effort to sand them and to resin coat them and to figure out the right way to do that and design the, the product a certain way. So it's like anything, if, if you want to put the effort in, if you enjoy it, then it'll work. Um, but you can't just half-ass it. Like you can't just be like, I'm just going to 3D print a hook and put it on Etsy. You can, but you're not going to get the kind of feedback that I think a lot of people like us are looking for. Like we really want these to be good quality. We exactly. really want them to work. Yeah, um, I struggled with, like you were saying, you coat yours in resin. And I think I'm going to have mm -hmm. to attempt that with mine because I get different glazes. And with Paul, mm -hmm. hey, you don't need to glaze it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't get residue on it if it's just mm -hmm. not but I think the shine of the glaze makes it look prettier and I think a lot of people it's more appealing yeah glaze is uh I've noticed will start to peel after a long time of use so I have to switch to a different glaze now because I've had yeah and feedback uh was that the glaze is peeling it's like a terrible like I know that there's hooks out there that people are just not enjoying using and that's that's one of the struggles of being a handmade business is you know yeah you're the only one that can uh, figure out the problems there's not a yes a different person customer service yeah. to handle the issues <laughs> yeah yeah well and I think um we totally understand that we started out using um this stuff called ecstasy 3d which was like a coating for 3D prints. So when people make 3D models and things like that, this is what was put out there on the market is like, this is what you should use to coat your items. Um, before we even went into like, okay, let's try to use resin, which it's similar. It's, you know, you mix it in a similar way. And, um, but we actually have some hooks out there before we switched to like a different type of resin that had started to yellow. Oh. Now this was early on. This is this was two years ago. So these hooks were made two years ago, but there are people who have some of our hooks who in the places where they were holding them had started to turn yellow. Right. And, you know, when I had looked into it, there's definitely resins out there where if you don't buy the right stuff, it can definitely um, change in color to like a creamy yellow color as it ages. Um, but like you said, we're the only ones who can fix it and we have to say, okay. Now, the good news is most of those people were on the bad bandwagon early of like, we just want to support you, you know? So they're not like, we need a replacement for our hook. They're just like, okay, I'm glad to see that like, you've already moved on. 
like your hooks have gotten so much better. So like that growth, I yeah. think is a big part of it, you know? Yeah, I think that's what is uh, awesome on the flip side being the only person you also bad you also get all the good and all the people that are supporting you and are um willing to support you time and time again and it's it's really fun to have those customers who are always excited for whenever you make new hooks or you know or constantly putting in orders and um whenever there is something bad that happens their understanding about it and I think mm -hmm. really it's an awesome feeling whenever something when you screw up on something and they're like it's okay let's fix it and I'm not mad about yeah. it like Thank yeah you. because yes yeah. you no know, at the end of the day I'm just a person uh just trying to figure mm -hmm. it out and you know with with the growth of my company I try different things and sometimes it doesn't work and I yeah. like step back and uh yeah so since my the birth of my fourth, I took a, a bit of a hiatus, mm -hmm. and now I'm trying to get back into it. And I've been a little rusty. I think I think I've been a little rusty. I'm still not used to to um, getting back into the bit. So probably for the holidays, I'm going to be taking a break. I don't see yeah. you as a break. You're like uh, a workhorse <laughs> right through the holidays. Well, and I think a lot of it, you know. It's just me and my husband are now doing it full time. So it is, there is, there's that feeling of, well, we have to pay our bills with this. <laughs> you know? And I think, um, you know, having that support, we still have a lot of freedom, which is great. Like I, I kind of have to force myself to take breaks, like on the weekends, usually um, Sunday is the big day where we're like, okay, no work. Like we're going to either watch TV, we're going to relax, you know, we're not going to work unless it, it's absolutely necessary. Um, but you know, I think too, it's, um, you know, we don't have children. I mean, and that's a huge, you know, that's a huge, obviously time commitment and you have four. <laughs> so like taking care of kids and, you know, if, you know, when we had, when I had another full-time job, we were doing that on the side that had to take more breaks, you know, and the, the scale, and it, it is nice with the handmade business, you can scale it really wherever you need it to be for your life in that moment. And I think the key with the key to that is if you're going to scale it, it's just being honest about it. And I feel like that's why social media can be beautiful is because you can just be honest. You can say like, Hey guys, you know, I'm going to take a break for the holidays. Things are crazy. If you have a custom order, you can still reach out, but you know, I just have to let you guys know that I, you know, things are, it's a lot right now, you know, and I think people appreciate it because they connect with that, you know? Yeah, it is. Uh, that is the great thing about working for yourself, having your own business is you don't have to feel so much pressure. If it's getting too much, mm -hmm can tell yourself it's okay to take a break and I think it's important mm -hmm. um that way you don't get the burnout because yes it can be so real and it can be so exhausting and whenever you lose inspiration it it makes it not fun and I think you know if we're gonna have a handmade business if we're gonna do this and we need to be able to enjoy it definitely and I think for me it's been the main thing that helps me avoid that feeling of burnout is that I have so many different aspects of the business now. So, you know, if I'm, if, you know, now when, when it's time to focus on hooks, we have to focus on hooks. And the good thing is we've kind of transitioned to releasing larger batches. So, you know, it used to be when we did a hook release, we would release anywhere from, I guess, 11 to 22 hooks. Cause we had 11 sizes. So we were like, we could do one of each size or two of each size. And we would do that once a month. So it wasn't, it wasn't bad. That was manageable. And um, so it's gotten to a point where now we have more sizes. We've got the hybrid hooks. Um, and so I think this last release, we had almost 60 hooks in the release. Um, but, you know, we did mystery boxes. So like we hadn't done, we haven't been doing monthly releases, you know, so it's maybe like every two months, but it's a bigger release because we were trying to have some inventory for the holidays, you know, in the shop. Um, but when I'm not focused on helping make the hooks, like if we're not sanding hooks or if we're not resin coating hooks, um, 
you know, I can either be working on my website, I can be designing, you know, if I need to work on a new design, I can be doing like the merchandise, I can be drawing like a new design on the iPad. Um, you know, I can do like the tedious things like, you know, making sure my Etsy shop has the right SEO, you know, so like I can pick and choose how I'm feeling that day. If I'm feeling more on the, um, uh, what would it be? Right brain, left brain, you know, depending on which one is more active that day, I can do more creative things, or I can focus on more of the tedious website, SEO, Etsy, that kind of stuff. Now, let me ask you 60 hooks. How many listings did you make and how long did that take you? Because I absolutely hate making listings. I hate it. Yes. So that has been an evolving process. And for anyone who does any kind of like batch releases, um, I have tried to make my listings as generic as possible while having specific things that I change out. So when I release hooks now, um, I do a different listing for each size for our classics. So these, these all 3D printed hooks, we still only have 11 sizes um, or maybe 12. I think we have 12 because we have like the ridiculous 35 millimeter hooks now, <laughs> so, but we don't always release those, you know, so every batch won't have a 35 in there, but um, from 10 to 25, we've got 11 sizes. So that's 11 listings for sure that I'll need to make, but I can go back to my old ones. So like I'll search my Etsy listings for um, whatever the name of the last hook was. So like when I went to release these, I think the last hooks we released was Solar Flare. So I typed in Solar Flare, it brought up all 11 of the Solar Flare listings and I just clicked copy and opened up 11 new tabs with <laughs> each of those sizes. And I went to each of those tabs and I replaced the pictures re uh, and replaced the color. So like everything else is the same. I can replace the color, the sizing is still the same. They're all made the same way, you know, um, keywords are the same because I don't put color in the keywords, I just do like, Jumbo hooks, ergonomic hooks, handmade hooks, you know, in the tags. Um, and then now with the hybrids, because, you know, we've got these puppies now. And I was like, there are way too many hybrid hook sizes, especially when you've got baits and you've got boy and you've got tapered and you've got whatever. Um, so I only do one listing for these. And I do, instead of choosing the size and uh, baits versus boy or tapered versus inline. I do like 3.5 3.5 tapered, 3.5 baits. So it's all one because you can have a ton of those variations. Right. Um, so for all of these, this will be one listing. So technically, when we do a release, I have 12 to 13 listings max. So you just so it's to not too bad. Just renew it every time, so it's like the one listing, and you just keep adding to it. So I don't. I definitely don't change the old listing. So for instance, if, um, let's see, let's do this. Oops, where is this? Okay, so if this was the first one that I listed, and let's pretend this is the same size. So I listed this one, and then now we're gonna come out with these. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not gonna change this original listing ever. I'm gonna copy it. Right. So this one still hangs around. Okay. Um, but that's it. And yeah, I'll renew them if they sell, you know, if it, if it, cause I think it's three months that you get with the 20 cents. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's gotten easier. Yeah. I've been, I've been trying to figure out the easiest way to do listings without making a listing for every single hook. And I'm trying to see what sells better, you know, mm -hmm. I've seen, uh, I don't really do a bunch of the same handles. I don't mm -hmm. My, my brain getting too bored with repeating, repeating, repeating. I think one of the only ones that I did like, the same style handle for multiple different hooks was the the ghost that I did recently. Yes. And mm -hmm. Everybody loved that one. So I just renewed the listing. Every time I made more of them, I would just use the same listing. Mm -hmm. Figure out how to get that bestseller tag on a listing. Without renewing the same listing, I would never be able to get a bestseller. And I think it helps those That's kind of true get noticed, you know? Yep. Yeah. And I think, I think if we had, so this, this is one of the first ones, these unicorn ones that we've repeated. Mm -hmm. Um, but even though we repeated this one, 
we didn't use the same glitter. Uh, the colors obviously look a little different, you know, because we've come so far because we did these like a year ago and now these are the new ones. Mm -hmm. So I could potentially have renewed the old listings for these, um, which like you said, I think that would have probably been better even if I changed out the colors, because like you said, that means that listing got more sales. Uh, so you could potentially have that best yeah. so on seller pack. Favorite and items, like this item has been restocked, you know, and I yeah. kind of tap into those because I get so frustrated and then it sells and then it's gone forever, you know, because I, I yeah. have one offs, you know, it's just a random color mixture. But if someone really likes it, then maybe I should start, you know, renewing those listings. Mm hmm trying to yeah more sales <laughs> yeah well and I think for you too if you have color combos that you like um it might be fun to make um if you made like two or three and they had uh the same color combination but obviously they're unique because you know you made them in a different way you could do a listing for that style showing like three different, like this is what they could look like. Kind of like the Furls um, Streamline Galaxies, how they're all a little different, but they're this color focus, um, but it could be a custom listing. So you could say, if you like this look, it's gonna be unique. It may not look exactly like this, right. um, but this is the color family. This is how I'm going to create the handle. And then those could just live in your Etsy forever, you know, as long as you can get those colors. Yeah, there are hook makers do that. And I am, I guess I'm really nervous about someone purchasing something that I have to make without talking to them first. And I guess I could add in the notes, please contact seller if purchasing, mm -hmm. because what I don't want to happen is a big miscommunication to happen and then get a bad review. <laughs> what do you feel like your biggest concerns are? So like if you listed, like let's say you listed this yeah. here for me. Um, and if I, if what it would be made to order, uh -huh. get it and they're like, well, the shape is a little off. The okay. color is a little off. You know, I don't want, I guess my fear is, is, is uh, just having a product go to a customer and they're not happy with it because I've had that before, you know, and I, yeah. you know, with Etsy, especially because I've never tried to sell on any other uh, platform reviews, I feel like do help either help or hurt your business. And I have only had one review that was below five stars and mm -hmm. I, scared of, of getting a lower rating, you know, because, oh, well it was falsely advertised or whatever, you know, but I, yeah. I, um, I think you're right about, I just need to like disclose coloring may be different size, shape mm -hmm. varies. Um, I think that's something that I need to just dive into. I am, I yeah. tend to be on the timid side as far as diving into things like this, this, uh, yeah live chat I was on the fence about it especially since I was running late too. it was like maybe I should cancel I was like no I won't no uh -uh. <laughs> that's one thing I'm practicing more of is just uh letting go of the fears and just yeah what I want to do because I want to do it and, you know you don't know yeah. it will work until you try so I think yeah back into it since I've had my baby uh, my big break uh I've kind of almost forgotten what I was doing before that worked you know and I did have a lot of uh colorways that I would do regularly and they would sell well so I just need to I guess backtrack a little bit and study what worked in the past and try to recreate I guess uh, a system that that works rather than trying to just make a bunch of random hooks yeah, and so my husband is chiming in. He says, those people who are going to be shitty and gripe are going to be shitty no matter what you do. Haters going to hate. Yeah. And says, make stuff you love because you love to make it. Works for me anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've tried. To, I don't know. There's a few hooks in my shop right now, and they just haven't sold. And I'm just wondering, like, is it something that's wrong with the listing? Is it the way they look? Is it the size that they are? Because they don't even get any likes. So it's like, there's got to be something wrong with the listing. I don't know. 
So I bet you, so I think, I think the biggest issue that I feel like is a struggle for people like you who are making um, the handles already attached to the hook. There's always going to be the issue of like, I love that hook so much, but I'm not going to use that size. Right. I think that's always going to be a struggle. Um, you know, and that's how like for us, we had to, you know, we just made all the sizes. They're all in the same color. And we definitely started seeing like, okay, these sizes are selling way more than the other sizes. So we need to stop making these other sizes and the releases because they're just not moving. And that's more difficult, um, you know, when you're making more of, you know, the, the items like you are where it is custom, you're molding it around the hook size. Um, and I think that's why for you, I do feel like it would be interesting to see how, you know, things performed if you said, okay, I'm going to make, um, so let's say you pick four colors that you really love and you make five or six hooks ready to go of like, this is, you know, the collection, but they're all a little different. Like you said, they're all going to have the same color. But they're not going to look exactly the same, right. um, but you could have a similar diameter. Like you could say the handles are going to be, you know, anywhere from this many inches to this many inches, no matter what. And they're going to be about this wide, no matter what. Um, and show these six different options of like, it could look like any of these. Mm -hmm. And that shows people like, okay, it may not look exactly like this one, but it it's going to be like, you know, if I look at all of these together, they'll be similar enough. Okay. And I think that will help with that idea of like false advertisement because you're showing the the range by making six of them photographing them together and saying this is the collection you know that that you can purchase from but then they can choose okay i like this but i want you know the susan bates six millimeter you know and then you could say okay well you've seen all six of these it's going to be similar to these but i can make it in the hook size you want and that may help move and then if they buy the one you've already made it's ready to ship you know um but that may help a little bit yeah yeah, I mean, I do a lot of custom orders, and I think um, communicating is just really important to me. I, mm -hmm. you know, I've always had, uh, I've always tried to have really good communication with my customers about their, their hooks and how it's going to look before I send it. And I think um, I need, I think I've been slipping because of, you know, the, the new transition into the new section of my life. I Yes feather brain I will say so, so it's a it's a process it's a learning process it's always a learning process and I think um you know I just have to work with uh you know what makes me happy you know I think that's yeah. I keep doing what well, makes and I think that because you have this passion to talk to your customers it's going to come out so like I'm the same way I I want to know that if I if someone orders something and I feel like something's off, I want to know that I can reach out to them. Now it doesn't always work because Etsy notoriously people, you know, are going to think that it's just like a, you know, automated message when I, when I try to reach out, you know, so they may not reach back out. Um, but like for you, if you got, you know, an order for something and you wanted to follow up, I know for me, I reach out on Etsy and sometimes I'll even send an email to the email that's listed just to be like, Hey, I saw that you purchased this hook. I just wanted to reach out, you know, and make sure, you know, if you have any questions about this order, you can contact me. And I think people will see and appreciate it. And if they don't, you know, then they weren't expecting it. You know, they were just expecting to get what they get. And um, it's like my husband said, we've gotten some not so great reviews. And most of the time it's people who, you know, didn't read their script description or, you know, and at least Etsy, you can respond to all of your reviews now. So that's super helpful. I've done that a couple of times now for both of our Etsy accounts. <laughs> well, so. I hate to cut you off. And no, you're good. But I have to get going. I have to. Uh, yes. My daughter from school. So it was. Yeah. Good time. We can do you too. Chats in the future. And I want to talk to you about that more. And or maybe we can uh, schedule something really soon. Definitely. And we can do another live like this and have a focus because I feel like that would be really fun. So thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to everyone soon. I hope y'all have a great weekend. Happy hooking. Bye.